you. Welcome to the July 20th, 2022 joint meeting of school committee finance and capital subcommittees. Um, I'm just looking at the agenda. The first item that's up is approval of minutes of the June 15th, 2022 joint meeting of finance and policy. Um, can I get a motion on those? I'll move that. Any second? A second. Okay. Any comments before we go to a vote? Okay. And then just to clarify, David, are we are you going to take five policy isn't here so you're going to vote on those separately from the finance perspective i mean from the policy perspective right yes okay uh okay um andy how do you vote yes nancy yes suzanne yes and i vote yes um okay the next item i think is helen's yeah um let me just see this approval of the minutes of May 24th of the Capital Subcommittee. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Okay, and a second. Oh, I see, anybody can do that? Or just the Capital Subcommittee? Oh wait, you, yeah, Suzanne, you can't move it because you're not on Capital. Well, but she was then. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, to, make it, to make it not worrisome, I will move it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Andy, do you want a second? <laughs> sure. Okay, so Andy? I, I vote yes. Uh, Mariah? Yes. I don't think we can get Suzanne to vote. Uh, so, and the chair votes yes. Okay, let's move what on. What about, isn't Nancy on it too? Yeah, I vote well, yes. I, oh, I'm sorry, but you weren't That's at okay. the meeting. <laughs> you could okay. abstain if you wanted to, Nancy, yeah. since you weren't there. Okay, I, I think I should abstain. I'll abstain. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that was not meant as a slide. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. And you have one more, Helen, you had the tw 24th and the 31st of May also. Oh, we should have done them both together. I, I, my screen was covering it. Um, okay, so uh, I'll move the minutes of the 31st. Second. Okay, um, so and Mariah? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Nancy? Abstain. Good. And the and the chair votes yes. Okay. Okay. Third item on the agenda is acceptance of grants and gifts. If you all recall, um, this was the fifty thousand dollars that we had discussed at the finance policy meeting, and um, and had also discussed at full school committee. And we were waiting for our confirmation from Brookline Community Foundation that they were um, that they accepted the change um, in use. Um, from a full staff member to a partial staff member funding. And we got that confirmation earlier this week. I don't remember who was on the email, but it was sent to us that they accept that change. Um, and so we need a motion on acceptance of that generous grant. It's a motion to recommend to the school committee. I'm sorry, you're right. Motion to recommend to the school committee on that one. Suzanne, you're gonna, okay, do we have a second? Thank you, Andy. Um, Andy, how do you vote? Yes. Nancy? I'm staying. Okay. A oh, oh, wait. Was that? This is on a, no, this is on a grant that we oh, are the now. Grant. Yes. No, no, no. That's a yes. Okay. Vote yes. Suzanne? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, okay. Thank you. Now we're going to get to the number four, which is reviews to review of proposed multi-year public schools of Brookline capital investment program. Excuse me, Maria, there was okay. also a memo on gifts. There was. I'm sorry. I did not see that. Thank I you for catching either. that. It's a separate attachment and I missed that it was um, there. Okay. Um, so we have a separate memo on gifts acceptance, which there are two gifts from Alliance Energy um, for $500 each, one to the Lawrence School and one to the Pierce School for STEM programming. Um, do we know how the, the, only those schools apply? How does that work? Does anyone know? Do you know why it was Lawrence and Pierce? There's nothing about that information. Who is Alliance Energy? Uh, I do not know who Alliance Energy is other than it's a big company. It's a big company? Yeah, global partners, your local Exxon mobile station. Oh, I think this this might be the thing that Elias Audi involves with that nominates schools for. Do you remember, David? Vaguely, I think it might be that, yes. Okay. 
Um, it doesn't come, do, does it come with any strings attached? That is an excellent question. And Sam is not here. And um, is Donna Sam here? Is, Sam is going to be on. I think he was driving. Okay. Donna, do you have any information about any terms and conditions of this grant or is it unrestricted? I apologize. I was trying to unmute. Um, there were just two um, sheets for each school congratulating the schools. Um, they should have been attached to the memo. It says, they were, but there's not much information there. You no, know, that's all I have as well. Um, your school has been awarded a $500 grant through our partnership with the Exxon Mobil Educational Alliance program. Uh, your school was nominated through a collaboration as the local Exxon Mobil distributor in your local Exxon station located in Brookline. Um, I don't see, let me just see. Why don't we put a pin in this one? Yeah. And we can either, if we get the chance, we can come back to it today or we can get a little bit more information about any sort of restrictions on the funds and any more details and then bring it back. Is that okay, Donna? Sure thing. So okay. restrictions and more details. Yep. Yeah. If the principals applied for it or if it just came, you know, out of the blue or. Yeah, any of the details. We had asked before for grants and gifts to get a little bit more information on them in general. So I think it's great that we get that here. Will um, do. thank you. Okay, now we'll go on to thanks, Robin, for catching that. And now we'll go on to item four, which is the proposed multi year CIP. So, um, both Mar Mariah and Matt and Charlie, to my, the best of my knowledge, have been working on this, uh, these spreadsheets, and Matt uh, specifically trying to to help us to understand the things that need that the principals, you know, the wants and the needs in the different buildings. And um, I guess the best thing is for, for Matt to go through it and then, then we can talk about what we want, what our next steps would be. Can I ask a question before you start, Matt? Is Sam joining us? Yeah, we can't hear you, Matt. Yeah, we can't hear you. You're not on mute, but we can't hear you. I talked to Ms. Sam about- Sorry about that. So there's there we a go. little thing here that sometimes I accidentally hit the button for my headset. Um, uh, I haven't talked to Sam since this morning, but as far as I know, he, he'll be there. So I talked to Sam at three o'clock and he was driving home to be on oh, this Zoom. So he, he'll probably be joining the only thing us I can in imagine the next is couple that of minutes. Yeah. Okay. Is there, can we start, do you think, or is there a reason you want to wait for him? I think we could probably start, right, Matt? Just to start to explain, yeah. did everybody get the spreadsheets and could everybody open them? I haven't even had the chance to look. I saw the email came through, but it came through too late for me to look at anything. Okay. I'm happy I also work. wanted to acknowledge, we actually have a new member of advisory joining us, Carolyn Thal, who's here. Oh. Yep. Okay. So I Carolyn's no I think that. now on school subcommittee. So oh. apologies, Carolyn, we should have done that at the beginning, but um, but better late than never. <laughs> and here's Sam. Sam. No, My no. apologies, hello. Mariah, thank you for doing that. There's, there's probably, also going to be one additional person added to the school subcommittee, um, but that uh, individual is not confirmed yet. So I don't want to uh, tell you the so, name, but do expect someone else. How who mysterious. Went, <laughs> who went off? Uh, Scott. Scott. Oh, okay. So it's, but you're on the school subcommittee, not on the capital subcommittee. Carolyn, correct, yeah. So it's Carolyn, Cliff, Catherine, and Ben. But Catherine's are, not here. Okay. And, and the player to be named later. Yeah. yeah. And then and the player to be named later. And then Carol is here on behalf of the Capital Subcommittee. And I think she's the only one, right? Or Cliff, maybe you're duly appointed. I don't know. No, Cliff no, is I'm also. Not. Yeah. Okay. Great. But here okay. we are. Now that we've straightened all that out, everybody knows everybody now, right? Pretty yep. much. Okay, we're ready for the presentation. Okay. I'm going to start sharing my screen in a second. So you'll walk us through, Matt, or maybe I'll maybe we'll provide a, both a little context here, I, if I can try. Um, so the goal here, and then I'm going to let Matt run it. The goal, and this is similar to what I've done at least the past 20 years before last year, and I think Matt to some extent as well. You know, the only different here, difference here is um, 
it's cut by location um and but otherwise it's 24 through 29 and what i had matt do is uh, and i see on the right it's a total for those six years it, it looks like it totals to 30 35 million approximately and then the totals at the bottom will, will go year by year uh, i don't know what location 1a is i see baker baldwin b uh, and then down it one, goes. One a, one a is district wide, just so it would be at the top of the list. Oh. Okay. And what I what I did uh, instruct is a strong word, but what I advised Matt to do is certainly for the first year, twenty four, is to prioritize. Now he's prioritized by building. I was hoping there'd be sort of an overall prioritization somewhere, and maybe there is. Uh, for the committee then to, uh, this is draft, this is a rough draft, I would say, uh, but then uh, for the committee to push these around, the projects around, uh, this is our best, and Matt went through all the buildings, um, that was also uh, something we focused on in getting feedback from building, you know, facilities, people, Charlie Simmons, as well as the building principals for what they feel is getting in the way of buildings, that facility that's conducive to teaching and learning. And again, then take these priorities, ultimately drill them down to a district-wide priority list. And then the committee can look at that, determine are there things that we're missing or they think the priority should be different and then or, and what do they not like about the format and then the goal would be to come back with a with a solid almost like a a, a draft but not a rough draft a, fi a, a final draft at which point um the the subcommittee would would then look to vote to refer to the full school committee to then vote for us to submit to the town and you know in 24 the 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 direction again to map was to, if we had to get solid quotes really the effort was to be uh for the first year because that's likely the only year that has an opportunity to be funded um and that's and then a narrative to back up the need um for those for those 24 asks and that that's pretty much the way we went about it and so uh, I'll turn it over to Matt and thank you. Yep, so like, so there's three tabs on, on, on the workbook. There's a summary tab, there's the data detail tab that you see there that's got a whole lot more information and in what year things are estimated to be at. And then I actually included like a leases tab for those of you on the school committee, you've seen this before, it shows our leases and what's out. I've color coded some things up the top, but um, let me t run you back to the summary. So 1A is across the, the system. And the first priority for 1A, uh, you know, would be uh, 2,143,000. And if you want to see what makes up that number, you just double click and it gives you a list. We have leases for classroom capacity, uh, replace failing school furniture, uh, replace some magnetic whiteboards, uh, relocate the PSB administrative staff um, at Two Clark Road to um, Newberry, cost for that, uh, vehicle replacement, two-way radio, and a HERA, and then which year those, those things are out. And things could be moved. Um, for example, the vehicle replacement could be pushed out a year or two. Haven't had that, uh, haven't had that discussion, but had to put it somewhere in along those lines. Right, so you can see see the details. Things can be moved. They hear a plan renewal, not as flexible. We have to renew it every three years uh, um, by uh, state regulation. I'm not sure if it's a law or a code, but we have to have that for all of our buildings. They the hear a plan. So you, some things um, tell us some things are malleable. Uh, it's for uh, asbestos management, oh, okay. asbestos containing materials, and where they might be. So when somebody comes to work on the building, they can be aware of where there might be asbestos that's generally encapsulated because it's not allowed to be to be loose but it's just so as we have new buildings this becomes less relevant correct pretty much 
pretty much. Or as we've renovated. So there's about four buildings that might have some, right? Might Most of the buildings have some. Well, they can't. I mean, they do. How, how could Ridley? So Ridley's, Ridley's one of the ones that doesn't. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but the Probably other Runkle does. Is Runkle? Runkle was a renovation. So, Runkle's so it been abated. Runkle, I think, has a, there's a plan for each each school or a letter from the architect for okay. each building in town. All right. Um, I don't remember them all off the top of my head, but 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 we have that up there. Um, Mariah. Thanks, Matt. Two questions. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to ask the, the easier question first. Does whatever is proposed for FY24 or all of this, the multi-year plan, include the things that traditionally building department would be asking for on behalf of the schools? No, this, this the, it, 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 the items do not. So if we go back to like data detail, and I'm just going to filter to a, a, a smaller building to keep it simpler. So if we look at the, the Heath School, for example, right, uh, in here would have a flooring replacement, um, principal's choice for some classrooms, gym floor refinish, which, you know, isn't, doesn't need to happen for a few years out and so on. Um, these are mostly um, cosmetic things or, or other types of repairs. Um, it's not necessarily mechanical and attached to the building, like windows okay. and window shades are, but the- I'm, I'm gonna the ask, was, yeah. I'm gonna ask though, if it's, I mean, maybe people would disagree with me, but I, I personally would like to see our ask be inclusive of Charlie's stuff so that we are understanding our entire scope of things that are being asked for on behalf of the schools. Okay, um, I got to get that from Charlie and what that's going to be. Because I mean, he's maybe got other a, people he's... feel differently, but that's how I feel about it is like, it's often a surprise to come to a CIP meeting of the town and they say, oh, well, there's, I'm making this up, $300,000 on behalf of the schools but it's not stuff that we necessarily have ever talked about. And, and if I had $300,000, it might not be the things that right. we uh -huh. as a school committee are prioritizing. Well, let's stay on Heath and I don't disagree with you. Actually, I see Runkle at the bottom where this is a Heath cut, but let's, let's take that out for a minute. Um, to Mariah's point, and again, this is why this is, I would call a rough draft is, you know, I had made that assumption that you said, Mariah, and I know that Heath needs an electric service upgrade. And I would have expected to see that here, and I don't. And so, on so the first here, the list. Sorry, Sam, I had to scroll up. Okay. So then what isn't on here that would be from Charlie? So if you have all this stuff, well, well it, what isn't? So he, so a building envelope, uh, rotation cycle, elevators that have a rotation cycle. And, and Charlie, those are separate initiatives that are already baked into the CIP, correct? Yeah, they have different warrant articles to cover those things. And they're a combination typically of like school and town buildings. And again, so, I just would like to know if, for example, it's building envelope, I want to have here, I want to know. I'm making this up, but if Charlie's CIP includes building envelope 250,000 and he's counting 125,000 of it as schools or whatever the number is, I wanna know which schools we're talking about and have it reflected here. He usually does, I think, list for the CIP and help me, Cliff, you or Carol. You but Helen, it's not present present here. No, it's not I'm, when we look at it holistically. I'm not arguing I'm not, with you. I'm yeah. not arguing with you. I, I think, I think right. it is. I think the information is readily available. It's just not here as we're looking at all yeah. of it. Right. So it's, it's not. And it's again, not, it comes down fully, to. It's not fully compiled that way. Um, yeah. I need. I can give this to Charlie and he can add it. And Okay. But so then, that and, and he, but he may need he may need to be directed by the school committee to add it because he may not want to and because he'll say I already do it somewhere else. Well, well and so then I'm the bigger good. issue, I'm sorry to interrupt, the bigger issue then is when it all rolls up, and this is a larger conversation with Melissa and Mel and and others, maybe even AC, is how do they want how how do they we can see it any way we want, but then how does it get, how does all this roll up and get presented overall? Right. And I don't have that answer. 
right now. I know what we, I know what you would like, Mariah. I know what I'm used to, but then the town has these separate initiatives that are bucketed. Well, and I outside. think that the easy answer would be to essentially put in a, um, I, to one of two ways. One is that the requester is Charlie, and yep. then we can filter those out, or we do a, an additional column that basically says, um, like initiative building or initiative schools, right? Building department versus schools department. And that way those are filtered in and we can see them. There's plenty of ways to, to manipulate the data in a way that gives us that visibility. I just wanna have it all in one place. So we are all on the same page as and to I what's would, being asked. Understood. And I, would, and I think that's e pretty easily modifiable. Okay. It, it's just gonna take- By school. So by school to have that done by school and by year that he's- Yeah, covering. all I'm saying is when the detail includes that column, that's easy. Like that right. can be done really easily. Um, I'm gonna ask my second question now, cause I think we've got, unless anyone else has anything they wanna say about my first question. Well, and you're saying by column or by row? Like Helen, under... when you, when you, when the, the, you would build in a column that says, for example, um, we just insert a column in right now. Yeah, I'm going to. Yep. And then put in a label that says something like um, requester, or we already have requester. Well, so well, like requester. department or something like that. And then the first one like might be the school's department. And if, and if the second one might be building all the way through, you label it with either building department or schools. Okay. And then you can filter on it. So at the end we could present, oh, these are the things that building department is requesting on behalf of the schools. These are the things that the schools department is requesting on behalf of the schools. So it'd be pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, Bear with me, I'm just adding something. Yeah, okay. This is Carol, can I just ask one question? How are these things different from the category school rehab upgrades? Or is this what you're using to populate that in the CIP? Th this, this would be the list of all the things that would be there. And it, when I go back, you can see that there are uh, we've included the things like leases that would normally be in its own Warren article classroom capacity or some other things, trying to get them all into one list to, to Mariah's, Mariah's point. So um, we've got a brick repointing going on next summer at, uh, at the Lincoln School. And, you know... Uh, I don't know how much that costs, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in at at uh, hundred thousand dollars for now. So ten. Shouldn't that go in? In the right, you should copy yeah, the should, formula. Exactly, it should go right there, and then the total should sum automatically. Yeah, but it, it would. Yeah, it was in the FY twenty three budget, but it's not gonna start until right, next so year. Right, so you pop it in twenty four, and then the total would copy. Correct. You're, yeah, it's done. Uh, okay. Wait. Can I, Matt, can I also, and Sam, can I also request that um, those of us on the AC get a copy of this? Sure. Well, once it's once approved it's, by C, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, if, yeah, I mean, this, I, this is that to, mode for I leave feedback. that. To, yeah. yeah. Ultimately, you're going to get it because it's going to be a public document or I it's for it's published version. Know. If you wanted feedback from us, it's hard to give that on the fly to something with this complexity, that's all. All right. Yeah, I mean, this is more or less the same thing that we've been talking about for a year. We've had, we just hadn't, didn't have all the full data on it before, but we had it in Google Drive and we presented it in earlier meetings. I'm gonna ask my second question. Sure. My second question is, can you show us what the, what your proposed FY24 ask is right now? So it's, it the bottom. It's not an ask. It's the bottom. We're at three million five hundred and eighty-five thousand. Tried to break it up relatively evenly, um, and then FY twenty-five. It, you know, I could probably find a way to sh shorten the, the the list here. Eleven five, but you know, a big portion of that is is an option for Baldwin. Do we want to wait? Do we want to push that out? In, Further a down the line, other big things too. Show, I show, us, show us options. Yeah, there are some other Lynch. Uh, I see for a million and a quarter. I don't know what that is. Or BHS. I'm sorry, not yeah. Lynch. BHS. Yeah, that, a million that'd be a variety of, of deferred maintenance items that, that weren't and, and part. I'm, and, and, I'm, and BHS yeah, is yellow, folks, because that that's the one school that I really haven't had uh, time to to update. Um, 
And, and you and have 1.7 million for Lincoln in that. That's what too. I was seeing. Yeah. Down in there. So okay. that, that number we could talk. So here's a good one to talk about for now, right? A lot of those um, items are basically the facelift items. Let me just Correct. quickly uh, put that uh, in dollars. So it's easier to read. Um, you know, do we want to do the facelift for the building that's kind of in the middle of its useful life at 27 yep. years old yep. with paint, um, flooring refinish and some millwork and ceiling tiles, that type of thing, and um, have it feel like a new school largely on the inside. You know, um, what I recalled from a meeting last year was the concept of, can we break this out into um, sort of equal size chunks where the projects could be done over a summer. Cause somebody had, uh, had said, you know, well, it's, it's a $15 million list that hadn't been updated in two years. And um, you know, how, you know, can we get that all done if we just did it in once? And, and the answer was, well, no, because there's not enough time in the summer to get all that stuff done. You have to sort of Right, we talked out. about setting it up as like yeah. summer slammers and you would either go by like paint across the district or all in right. one building. We talked about that, that's right. Carolyn's been uh, waiting. A yeah, bit. Carolyn. Thanks. Um, um, I have a couple questions that are related. The whole category of classroom capacity, um, is there, and it's, I think you said that's leases. Is Correct. there any lease that's not for beep and if there aren't any leases that aren't for beep i guess i'm just wondering the background on why that's called classroom capacity um this isn't really a criticism just a comment i, so, I find that confusing and i think other people do too that that's beep i can explain that to you so Thanks. is that those monies were originally for charlie to create new classrooms at Baker, at Lawrence, everywhere around the district when we were experiencing huge enrollment growth. And so he would use that classroom capacity money at the time to, to fashion new classrooms, basically. We got, and what would happen is as we fashioned new classrooms, the beeps that were in those buildings got kicked out. And so we needed a place for them because we have to provide uh, early childhood education for kids who are IEPs, and we do it with typically developed, anyways, we had to have a place for them. And so that's how that then morphed. One that once there were no more classrooms to, the no more space to add to within our, uh, what we had, we started using that money to rent space so that we could use the beep classrooms. Um. Okay, that makes sense. And so it just still has to be called classroom capacity. Well, has there ever nobody been a changed conversation? the name. Nobody changed the name. I, we've talked about changing the name in the approval process, but for whatever reason, it, it doesn't happen. Um, and, and it could. And sort our of goal go, is to get out of these leases. I know. So That's good, our goal. Good, good segue, Helen. So this um, is. And sorry, go ahead, I, Carol. Oh, okay. Carolyn, because it, this is a related question. Um, well, this is a two part question. So not a hill to die on, but personally, and I've heard people ask this in other settings. Like I think it was even asked at the AC meeting last night. So I would imagine that it would continue to be something that you just have to explain if it's not changed to beep leases or something, but whatever, not a hill to die on. Um, then in terms of real capacity, um, you know, I'm gonna say the Baker School uh, in inevitably will be seeing enrollment growth um, from the, the big expansion at Hancock Village. Um, so then I would also see sort of another, I I'd be interested in whether um, there's any conversation about that and whether just that sort of whole issue, that's a little bit separate. And then there was something here about Clark staff moving to Newberry. Is that a decision that has been made? We don't control Newberry, so that isn't a decision we can make. Um, that's a town, that's a select board decision, but 
it's certainly been talked about because irrespective, um, you know, and we can talk about, I just, yeah, I mean, that's, I thought I saw that as an, as a, as an expense, as an item. I did. It is that, an item I, because honestly, depending on outcomes with, you know, everything's interrelated. I understand. You know, what I do know is we have a lease at Clark Road that we're committed to F23, F24. We have an option on 25. We've talked about with a Pierce project that is a potential swing space that might get a couple more option years, depending on what goes, you know. And if that's the case, non beep people have to move and our options are limited. And depending how quickly they have to move, we might have to find money this uh, in F23 to move them to Newberry, assuming we can even get the space for ourselves or move them in 24. And, and then, then it would be an ask for 24. So that's the assumption Matt's making because we have to, if you don't put it in okay. there, then you don't, then you don't have it. Okay. So, okay. Got it. It's, it's on there, but that obviously doesn't mean that it's, this, this is the early this is an, an early preview of the fy24 budget there's a lot of questions yeah. uh for the for the committee to provide some direction because ultimately we've got to prioritize things down one way or another so we'll stay on leases for a minute um we know the clark road lease comes to an end in, in fy24 and fy25 is an option year uh, should the Pierce project proceed and some of those students are relocated there and we extend that lease, then we could be there through FY27. And that would have, uh, uh, you know, three grades of, of Pierce there and four beep classrooms. But in the end of FY27, those folks all have to go somewhere. So are they all going back to Pierce or are they going somewhere else? And then the staff here, if, 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 uh, peer students are moving in, then, then the, the staff that are in classrooms here have to move out. And the only property um, in town that, that has the capacity to hold uh, uh, almost 40 folks would be Newberry. So, you know, there are some assumptions there, but it, it's not a done deal. None of these things are done deals. They're, they're plans that, that need to be approved. And then sticking with leases, um, Folks from the advisory have been pretty consistent my, my six years I've, I've been here about reminding us that um, you shouldn't be in leases. And, you know, we're in leases because it, we needed a short turnaround and a place, place to put folks. The school committee's uh, got to help us with some direction on, on where we're going to go. How many beep classrooms do we want to operate and where do we want to put them? Do we want to put them in new spaces? Do we want to fit them back into our, our new buildings. It's easy when we open a Ridley or a Driscoll and there's new beep rooms built right in. And those five classrooms, at, you know, sort of ask the question, do we want to stop renting from Temple Obahe Shalom for FY25? Now it's shaded green uh, in FY24 because Driscoll is supposed to open tentatively for September uh, of, of FY23. That may not happen. We're still waiting on, on, on some on an, on an updated schedule, and the contractor is working diligently with it. I have faith in Gilbane, but it's not an easy ask. So to be safe, you know, maybe we should plan to do that for FY25. But we have to give the landlord notice that we're not going to renew the lease. Uh, several years ago, the school committee asked for um, a leases with, with option years at our option to renew or not but we still have to exercise those by December 31st. So we sort of have to make a decision come December and we're not gonna know in all likelihood if, if Driscoll's gonna be, uh, we're not gonna be 100% certain before December's over if Driscoll's gonna be ready for the following September. So that, that's why that's there. Um, sort of the same thing with Temple Emmeth. Um, do we wanna uh, utilize Baldwin? But Carolyn, to your other point, you know, I think we need to, uh, have an updated uh, enrollment study because I, I keep hearing, you know, thoughts about the way things could evolve uh, uh, in the, in the west end of town with it, with the Baker neighborhood with the construction that's going on there. 
I've got a, a meeting coming up with the both the principal and the and the the developer uh, to go over you know any changes from last year with where things are and where, where they're at. To, and, and the and, only thing I, I'm sorry, yeah, the ahead, only sir. thing, I, yeah, the only thing I would add there, and thank you, Matt, about again, and there was discussion last night. Driscoll's coming on with some additional capacity, but not in the right section of town. But there is additional capacity if Baker, you know if it is, is overcrowded. The other thing I just met with uh, uh, Torrance Lewis uh, about, and this has been a, a longstanding ask, is uh, the concept of modulars on that site, if there's even room to site them. Uh, I've done those projects before, uh, you know, to create additional capacity, but then the issue is going to be you know, do we start to ask for those in 24? Because I can tell you two modulars given construction costs now uh, is gonna cost, it's gonna cost a million dollars to give you two classrooms, maybe four classrooms is a million and a half if you put them together. And, you know, we don't even know if there's room to cite them, but, you know, these are the kind of things, unfortunately, you know, we're going a year ahead and with the lead time on these things, it's sort of hard to pivot on a dime for these kind of things. And so, you know, we do try to think ahead, uh, Carolyn, to your point. It's just, um, it's not as easy as one would think uh, with public procurement and lead time and, and site work that would have to happen. And I've done many of these projects in my career, but, you know, we do think about these things. Raya. Um, I see that Margaret and Regina are in the attendees and I wanted to ask Robin if you might promote them um, just because I, um, this discussion of what the committee wants for BEEP, we did talk about having a working group for BEEP this summer. Um, and I just wanna suggest again that in my mind, what would be valuable is if there was a staff proposal that we could react to as opposed to us creating something, um, us proposing something that doesn't make sense to staff. Hi, Margaret. I wonder, what do you think about that? Like, Hi, everyone. Good to see you. Um, I think that's a great idea. I think a working group and, and thinking with the committee about the vision for BEEP and what is um, possible and what is um, fiscally possible and what educationally we should be doing for BEEP is a, is a necessary next step for the program and, and for, the, for the district, I do. Because yeah. I think it's it's completely interwoven with. Yep, I agree. I met, I was at, at the leadership meeting today and Sam and I spoke a lot about that piece about making a long-term plan for BEEP as BEEP moves back into the pre-K to eight schools. And what does that look like? Um, how do we manage that from the length of the day for be um, students and for teachers and for programming and to make can make ourselves competitive. Our, our, our model is a little outdated in eight to 12, 15 day um, for a lot of families just doesn't work. Um, and the need to think about that moving forward as well. So I would welcome that opportunity and I think it's absolutely a necessary step. Thanks. It seems to me it's something that possibly we could start on this summer mm -hmm. uh, yep. that we need to start on this summer. Uh, I, I did request it, so I, I eagerly await, Margaret, the next steps on that one. I'm happy yeah, I to have not I have not received that request. You and really? I really no, I have not from anyone. Sorry. Huh, so. Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna redredge up that email um and make sure you, I thought you were on it, but maybe that was before you got appointed as interim. Yeah, I mean so. I'm right. And so my interim role, I assume the actual role on the after the 29th of July. And Regina thankfully has stayed on for July as we're running our summer enrichment program at Clark Road. Um, and that's some um, children on site with teachers and it's fantastic. If you wanna get cheered up, come on over and see us next week. Um, <laughs> but yes, I would welcome that opportunity. I apologize for not reaching out sooner if that was an expectation, but I'm happy to- You weren't on it. Nope, so I will, uh, I, will, I will reply all on that one and add you. Okay, that would be great. Okay. Just while we've got um, Margaret here, we'll talk a uh, bit briefly. So. Um, you know, do we want to uh, still consider reusing Baldwin for beep? 
based on you know what we've learned between Driscoll Construction and uh, uh, planning for Pierce and the cost to renovate uh, the, the per square foot the Pierce uh, historical building um, being cheaper than tearing down and building new construction like the pricing that was used last year for Driscoll, we could estimate uh, a, a lower price for uh, renovating Baldwin to become a beep center and do we want to study that you don't have to answer the question right now but you know that would be sort of that end of town and somewhat tied to uh, whether or not we stay with Temple Ameth. Beep at Lynch you'll see a $355,000 uh, ask here and most of that is to reconfigure the the ground floor for wheelchair access and to make the the bathrooms uh, ADA compliant. We have the ADA uh, compliant park there and we have some kids uh, but the building isn't too great for, for kids with physical needs so it's not it's not the greatest of matches we, we've tried to get this through a, a grant uh, from the state a couple of times and uh, uh, you know it, it wasn't successful through through help with the um, you know folks that work in the town planning and health department and then uh, a little bit for some flooring repairs uh, so the the you can, if you, again, if you click on this, you can you can see uh, behind you know each and every uh, piece of it. Um, there, and I'm not sure if Margaret has anything else to add about um, spaces in the schools or, or rentals. Yeah, I mean, obviously there are some things we could do to um, um, spruce up um, Lynch and actually bring it into compliance for in ADA requirements. And I just really think to, to Mariah's point about thinking long-term about the plan for BEEP and what physical spaces you need and would Lynch Center remain um, a freestanding site not attached to a pre-K to eight building long-term no matter how many BEEP classrooms go into um, the schools? Is that like a long-term option and long-term consideration for BEEP? Um, and then also thinking about the partnerships that we have at some of the other locations that are beneficial to some of our families. So while we're renting space at Temple Omba Shalom, we do have a partnership with the trust center that allows families to have an extended day and options for summer programming as well. So there are some other considerations to think about because it's it's sort of that complicated conversation around the educational piece and the care piece for young families that makes it a little bit more challenging. And I could add that um, last winter, Helen, Matt, and myself and Charlie did a walkthrough of um, Baldwin as a potential site for BEEP. And I do think it has opportunities. Um, it is, um, I mean, it's a charming building and it's the landscaping and the property is beautiful, but it does need quite a bit of renovation, um, even for a BEEP classroom, which may not have the same technology needs as an elementary school building. So. Um, it, it would it would definitely be an option to think about. Uh, Suzanne was next, and then Mariah. No, thank you, Matt. I just wanted to also keep in mind, uh, you know, where where preschool uh, education, early education is going to go in the future. So it may be that there'll be federal state money coming down for universal pre K. I don't know, but we certainly need to have that as part of our conversation, I think uh, we wanna be able to take full advantage of that if money is coming our way or coming to people, so. Well, absolutely, Suzanne. And actually we have built into Ridley two uh, pre-K classrooms and into um, Driscoll three and three right. into the, the pro potential project at Pierce. And I just wanna again reiterate that, uh, you know, in our new current, building projects, we are having new classrooms, and, but that has always been, for the most part, uh, our goal is to bring those uh, early childhood classrooms back into the schools. And so right. I, think, I think some people have lost sight of that, uh, that, you know, if there's an extra building, I mean, an extra classroom somewhere, uh, we, it won't be empty. We, there are places uh, that we can use uh, to extend the program uh, as we look forward to what the, what the community needs. So I'm just throwing some of that out there. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And I think that within five years, four-year-olds will, will be required to provide uh, schooling. They won't be required to come just as with kindergarten, but that would be my, my, my thought of what might happen. Mariah? Thanks. Um, 
I wanted to comment on the FY25 $11 million a year, sure. which as I'm interpreting it, and I think I understood this correctly, as you said, it includes the $6 million placeholder for Baldwin renovation for BEEP. And it also includes a $1.7 million, the sort of facelift for Lincoln that you mentioned. And I think there's another, and then there's another couple of things. And I wanted to ask what the rationale was for putting those multiple sort of large projects in one year from both the operational perspective of having to oversee multiple large projects in one year, as well as the cost sort of um, cost spreading, I guess. Um, sure. So timing. So we'll start with Lincoln. Um, next year, next summer, Lincoln um, would would be uh, closed uh, for you know summer programs because they're gonna be doing some brick repointing and some roof work. So where we have multiple buildings in town for summer programs, if people are going to be doing exterior work up on scaffolding and, and things of that nature, we don't need kids going in and out of that building. So since they were going to be uh, closed for that, I uh, was going to try and see if, if we could uh, piggyback on. So if we're making the exterior um, sort of giving it a little bit of a facelift and uh, try to do the interior shortly thereafter um, for the second half of uh, Lincoln's useful life. Um, it's not, n doesn't need to happen then, but that was sort of the logic with the timing for that. You know, they, they'd be down for a couple of summers and then it would s sort of feel like a, like a very well refreshed or have a, have that a new couple of summers feel. or one summer. Um, Cause isn't the point that you'd be doing the repointing and the interior work in the same summer. If well, no, because the the summer, the the following summer, um, that's a twenty five budget and the twenty four budget, it, which is not shown here because I didn't uh, didn't have it. But that would be so. Try to try to stack them one on top of the other, so it it would be it would be be done, um, not necessarily at the same summer because the the the. Uh, the planning and the I think the bids are, are already going out for the um, Lincoln School because the building department told me that that they were coming in next summer. I don't understand. Already. Are you saying that you allocated all the costs into FY25, but actually it's a two summer program yeah. that would be split in half more or less between 24 and 25? Right. Okay. So then. And then okay. So so that was sort of the rationale for that one, but that. That you know that could be pushed. That could be pushed out to to other years. So the outside's done, and then whether it's one, two, three, four, whatever, how many years the committee is fine with, then the inside sort of gets refreshed. Um, for the Baldwin School, I think I explained that one. So there's there's seven million uh, or seven seven of of the eleven five difference. Um, the high school needs to be updated. So there's sort of the but again, I'm just asking about the stacking them all. Like, why? What is the rationale for putting Baldwin in FY25 as opposed to oh, yes. FY26 or something? So the rationale for for Baldwin at at 25, if we go back to the leases, is do you want to uh, get the money um, for design and then construction and then be able to move in for 26 and get out of the lease with Temple Emmeth? You know, so is can you go back question. then to the Baldwin um, summary? Yes. So where is the money for the leases this or the design the seventy five thousand in FY twenty four? Yes. Okay, and then the six million is the actual construction to be ready for FY twenty six occupancy, essentially exiting Temple Emma. That's a good question. I don't know how quickly that'll turn, Matt. It should be able to be done in a year if the monies were available. Okay. And the building's unoccupied. We've right. only got a few staff there now. We've well, got base is downstairs and we've relocated some OSS people, but maybe, you know, that's where they could maybe move to Newberry. But, you right. know, this is where everything is all, all interconnected. Okay. So it's, Can you it, also just mention like what the rationale is of the BHS deferred stuff for that same year again? Yeah, that needs to be needs to be updated. So for um, that, that's the one school I haven't really updated the list between what's going on in there for summer projects now and then streetscape next year. Um, you know, the suggestion I got from Sam was don't 
don't focus too much on on bhs they've had a sort of enough going on and, I would agree. and and then and then after the dust has settled a little bit um and and hal has a chance to focus on sort of the rest of the building not the construction and scheduling around uh around that that we would have a better updated list for what's what's remaining for deferred maintenance on bhs okay yeah. my my request on that is that we that since we really don't have this information that we push that deferred maintenance out number out to an out year until you sure. have back up on it i agree okay. and plus i think and and again I think given that 230 million has been put into that building, I think the optics could be better uh, not having it or having it way out uh, to your point. For the advisory committee who are here and might be wondering why this is on here, you know, we just did the high school, right? Uh, well, we did parts of the high school and that was part of, you know, what was determined at the time. Um, we did include the elevators, correct? Um, as refurbishing, but some of the other stuff was not included um, to save money on that project. And um, so that's why those things are still left undone in parts of the main building. I, I know it. I'm, I'm not trying to no, be I'm not critical. telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm telling the people from no, the industry who may not be aware of no, why, why that's that. on there. So now you see that that 11 million five is now 10 three. Yep. Minus six makes it four three, minus one seven makes it- uh, In the ballpark of what we yeah. sort of are identifying. Again, not that there's a fixed number, but trying to spread this, you know- Can I ask one movement. more question? Yes. So if I look at, there's if your, your two columns, J and K, if you look at K 28 or whatever it is, the grand total of everything. A category. Yep. Yeah, but go look down the bottom. It says 36 point something, 38.6. I can't read that because the font is 30.6, 30.674. Okay. I just want to confirm if you scroll down to the bottom of the big, the blue one, is. Um, You'd have is to the, add a total column, yeah. But it's the same thing. Okay, so you have plugged in, there's nothing in out years. You're plugging 30. everything into the six years, the six proposed Correct. years. Correct. Okay. There is there is a difference, so there must be something that's being captured that's in the uh, in another category between the, the two pivot tables. But I can they're about seventy five thousand apart, and they should match to your point, Mariah. But yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. So th there's there's that's the beauty of pivot tables to help you find errors that can be uh, somewhere in your long long list of data. So yeah. I'm okay, not, but I'm anyway, not going to find it here, but you I can guess see my how question, quickly we can sorry, change my, it. My question, Mariah, is is this more in line, the format? Is this more in line? With, I mean, this is more in line what I'm used to. Is, yeah. this more, is this more in line for what you're expecting or, or is helpful? I will share my opinion, and I'm curious to hear other people's. I think that this is very helpful. What I would like to see for FY24 um, is that, and I'm assuming, Matt, all of the things that are in FY24, do you mind just going yep. back to? Yep, Once I'm just yep. cleaning it up because when you start pulling things off the pivot table, you can have tons and tons of tabs. Go ahead. Can you just go click on the all the projects? Like if you go down to the bottom of FY24 and click on the total of FY24, it should pull all of them up. It, it will. Yeah, okay. So of these projects, my God, there's a lot. Yep. There's 141 <laughs> things on the. Okay, on so the list. so that's so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna that's one thing to think about. Like that's yep. a lot of stuff, um, and how we group them. Um, but like for example, do we ha do we have if someone says to us, well, what is the deal with, um, and and this is the other thing is um, where is it? This isn't quite right because this is not showing everything in FY22. I know you clicked on it, but a lot of these are all the um, like if you look, not everything here has an FY22 dollar value associated with it. Well, we're going right. to 24 is year one. Can you hide 21, 22, 23? Oh, I'm sorry, now? FY24, right. So, but not everything here has an FY24 value. So something's messed up in that. Agreed. Those okay. only should have 24s. Yeah, in. but we can figure that out. But anyways, just for everything that's in FY24, mm -hmm. I would like us to actually be able to see like, um, the row two, 
replace existing school furniture that's district wide but like mm -hmm. what does that look like what are the exact things that we're like take some pictures you know if we have um yep. you know any sort of backup for this right. everything so that I, we're requesting i would that's like the to next backup. step mariah so I, 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 can, I can i can step. okay yeah I, that's I can, what i'd like to see I, so yeah. i've started the text that would go into the open gov uh, i have not you know yeah. i probably have some pictures on my phone but i have not but, but i can but i can show you examples step. yeah but, but, and i want to i want to make one other just in the same way that we decided this year to go to a budget book and not use open gov for our budget request i would like to think about and i know you have to submit stuff in open gov like through the capital investments program for the town but i would like that we have in our actual budget book, a section on our capital requests that document this stuff. I would agree. Yep. So I, I would agree. say that, like, I would, I, if it were me, I would be starting from what is this going to look like in the book, and not starting from your open gov requests. That's how I'm thinking about it. Uh, and open I, gov can point to the book. Yeah, and I, I don't. I mean, let me let me be clear, Mariah. As I'm looking at this, and I've talked to Matt about it again. I, I'll keep saying it. This is a rough draft. Yep. But. When you start to see Baker carpet floor, what I, you know, and I don't see this here yet, but I'm looking for Matt to collapse these things in into one line because it's daunting. I mean, I'm looking at column M, which is, you know, and that's, you know, and I'm told, you know, we need to prioritize one through whatever, but that's after we collapse a lot of these things. I would expect. You know that in the end, I don't know if I added up how many rows have numbers in them. Let's say I don't know. There's a hundred. You know, and I'm thinking I'd like to see that number collapse to about forty to fifty, and then that's still daunting. And then because we're prioritizing one through forty or fifty, and then that's where you get the backup behind it, and we look at. You know, well, but also like rows 32 through 34 i think or 35 are all baker floor requests for for um different rooms and, I'm, and should that, be consolidated right they can be consolidated it looks less daunting when we're just when we're Actually, thinking that's about what i've mentioned to matt and he's going to work on it this again i, I and matt's done a lot of work yeah no this is great this time, is great but yep um, but these are the direct, this is the direction we're heading. And I, I at least want to give you a, a, a look while it's in rough draft because we promised we'd give you something. I, so I think it's great. And this is the format that we had outlined that I had structured and you filled in. So I'm, I would be a real cad if I said I didn't like it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, um, I really do like it. And I think it's a great first go around the thing that I would flag that is not here is well is partially here there's two things that are one thing that's partially here is we had talked about putting in um the facelift projects for the schools in the out years and what those were going to look like and then we'd also talked about putting in the um the sort of 50 to 70 year full scale renovations as well um and on the I think mean, we should come back to I, the, I got a, I got a question about the 50 to 70 year renovations because I'm not sure what you mean by that? You want me to estimate the cost of replacing the school? No, I think we just want to say we year. have a year exactly, like, okay. and we're expecting, you know, blah 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 school to be oh. fully renovated in the decade of whatever, so that we can right. sort of see this marching forward. Yeah, wouldn't that be better in a separate uh, spreadsheet? Oh, it wouldn't be. It was in a separate spreadsheet when oh, I okay. when I put it together on Google Drive. Um, okay. That there was three tabs. I um, guess in the six year look, honestly. The only the there's no other building that's going to hit this. I mean, it's Pierce right now. I wasn't and, talking about in the six year look, but I do think we should talk about Pierce well, we a little bit. We can them all but, out, you know, according to you know when they were done and what year they they had fifty and what year they had seventy five. Right, that was yeah. what we had put in. The, that's what I put in the other thing, which oh, isn't here yet. Um, okay. Yep. I'm not sure I have that. But, you have it. It's the same the same Google Drive spreadsheet that you used to pull this down from. It's that exact same link, and there's multiple tabs in there. I can share it I, with you again. I, I guess what I'm struggling with, Mariah, is I want to meet your needs, but I also want to meet the town's needs. And so, so... that's what I was going to talk to, um, Sam. I think you're right. Uh, we need to 
as the capital subcommittee, I think we need to go over the list for FY24. And <clears throat> I would suggest that we, we plan on visiting the schools and seeing these things on the ones that we need to look and see uh, or get pictures and, and have a capital meeting where we go over the details of, of what makes sense and prioritize those things for next year. I agree. That would be my my suggestion of how we go, how we take what's here. This is wonderful, Mariah, and I really appreciate this. But I think to get into the weeds a little bit more. Yep. Uh, to know going that into the weeds the right on decision. the next year. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Twenty four. That's the yes. year. To keep. Maybe carpeting isn't available for next year. Or VCT, you know, with the, the supply chain. So we need to also have, you know, what is on the top of the list, and then what else, um, you know, in case. We well, the other to thing to note here, Helen, is there's, and I don't quite understand this, hang on one second, Carolyn and Andy, is if you look at FY24, the things that are here, there are things that are listed priority one for FY24, column G is priority one. Right. And, and then there's also things that are listed priority two for column four. So does that mean that we, like, if, is that mean staff is saying we really need the stuff that's priority one for FY24 and it's okay I'm asking for an interpretation of what that means, Matt. Is it okay yep. to if we defer things like, oh, we could push things labeled two to out years if we don't have money for it? Or that's that, that, that's helpful to understand. Instead, instead, of, instead of trying to prioritize one through 171, I, I dumped them into categories of one through five for uh, you know discussion purposes. Uh, you know, some things are more of an issue. Uh, whether it be a safety issue or, uh, or or a contractual issue, where some other things are, well, the carpet's a little tired, but, you know, could we go another year or two? Yeah. Okay. Well, the carpet's frayed and, uh, you know, the chair or the desk like leg keeps getting stuck in it. And, and then, you know, people are bumping into it and starting to trip or the tiles are chipped and cracked and we need to replace right. them because it's a, a tripping hazard so um you know some some things are needed more quickly than than others you know or you know they'd like to replace screens well if there's one or two screens missing at a school then uh, that's a small maintenance issue if they want to if half of them are ripped then then maybe the, you know we should probably consider replacing them all and they're not ripped because of damage it just might be because of age and wear and wear and tear so, you know, I tried to place them in there, but to Sam's point, and, and I think, uh, and I know other folks are waiting to talk, you know, um, we need to, uh, I, I haven't given this list back to the principals because I'm still putting it together and push them on, on prioritizing, but they're not, they're all individuals that, that come about things at, at different ways. So it's, it's perfectly fine for some people to say, yeah, I need 10 classrooms redone. And, and that's what would be good for him, principal, he or she, uh, but it, it might not, you know, line up with all the other requests we have um, everywhere else. Okay. Oh, again, yeah, 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 I'll let people, uh, my only final comment related to that, Matt, is um, it's up to you and Charlie, you know, to, to look at this and then push these around first um, and then I guess my only concern is once you do that, I thought this might have been pushed around now and then prioritize. First, you got to collapse them, push them around in the years, prioritize them, and then we need to push it back out for, for you all to say, does this make sense? Or are there things that you say, are you out of your mind? This is not a high priority, push it over. Right. You know, like we did the high school, for an example, and oh my God, this thing should be done tomorrow, and it's in F27, you know, and so those are the kind of, that's the feedback we really need uh, to, to do mm -hmm. like a final draft. Yeah, and, and some of this thing, some of it, Sam, is, is so granular, just because the, the items here in gray are typically separate warrant articles, but, you know, the I'll just call it... Um, you know, of the 30 million, you know, maybe maybe uh, 20 million are not separate warrant articles. They're all sort of deferred maintenance until we roll them up into making one. But, you know, when we get in $50,000 to to go through the list uh, of all the things and prioritizing, 
you know, it, it, it having carpet rolled up into a price tag of 40 or 50 for one school hasn't gone over so well where we would try to parse it and give some of these things out to but I guess the point, the point we need to make, Matt, and again, I know Helen will, will, will validate this. Con it's not our job to, it's our job to advocate and articulate the need. You know, 50 grand in a district this size, I mean, it, I, I'll frame it this way. If I laid $100 bills of 50,000, it'd be real money to me. But when we look at a district like this, it's nothing to tackle this kind of list. So we need to really put out what the need is and we'll, we'll manage with what we have, but we really need to articulate the need and, 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 and justify it. Yes. So Carolyn has her hand up. She's had her hand up for a Andy while. Andy had his hand up too. I don't know if he pulled it down, Andy. I mean, he's on the committee first, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I pulled it down because uh... No, okay, should I should I go ahead and ask it? It was just that um, uh, we've been talking about this walkthrough detailed prioritization exercise. Is that best done before or after we actually know the level of funding for that year? Because it seems like a lot of effort to go and make, you know, possibly a rank ordered list of everything. If it turns out our funding level is such that most of the list, you know, is, is completely moved. My feeling is before, Andy, that's been my experience. Yeah. And the reason you do that is, again, your job, I mean, I'm sorry to tell you in this way that it, what your job is, but your job is to advocate and the, the appropriating authority's job is to give it. And if you don't get it, then that stuff pushes over. But you have to, if you don't, if you, if you ask, you might get, if you don't ask, you don't get. You don't, Andy, nothing gets appropriated without in a specific request. So we have to have the documentation in place. Right. Carolyn, and sometimes more monies come in later on. That and so, uh, but, but the, would we actually be submitting a request for everything on the list, even the lower priority items, or would it be actually an internal exercise to figure out what we- Lower what we priority items on? would not be in 24. That's the whole purpose here. Exactly. The only the highest priority would be asked in 24, and that's what we'd focus on. I see. Okay, so the total request would be nowhere near the the three point something million. That's the well. But bottom line I, for what that I year. would like to yeah. know, and we don't we don't have this in the data details. Sorry, Carolyn. But like, are th and maybe you know this, Matt or Sam, off the top of your head. Is there anything that's priority one that has been pushed to an out year? I can't answer that off the top. I haven't had a chance to dive into this. Yeah. So we can look at that data, um, but that would be something important to understand. Um, Sorry, the lease, I, I just filtered by priority one. So the leases we have contracts for, and so the out years, they were priority one. Uh, Baldwin. Uh, but that's not what it. I'm asking. I'm asking no. what's priority, what's a lower, oh no, that's right, that is it. So that that is, okay, That the leases are a different category, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And we need, and our goal is to not have them after the last year that we have to have them. Well, Correct. but the point, the point is just that like, there's something that's Baldwin priority one, which is in an out year. So it, we just want to make sure that whatever those are, well, it makes and the sense issue that they're there, priority yeah, one and, in an out and, year. And here, here's the thing, Mariah, just you know, when you do priorities that are school specific, a priority one at Baldwin would maybe get SNF 24 compared to priority one at Heath where the building might shut down because the electrical system will fry. And so I think that's where Matt and Charlie have to go through just because a school- Well, that's what I'm wondering, right? I mean, you said it was priority by school based on the principal, but we're hoping, I think, for our facilities and operations expertise to apply the priority to it, not necessarily, Correct. yeah. Correct. Right. Okay, Carolyn, you've been very patient. No problem at all. This is interesting. And um, this is really impressive. I don't know what how this was all dealt with before, but um, being completely new to this. Um, this is this is really great. So um, kudos. Um, and I might be speaking out of line, forgive me if I am I'm new to advisory. So I appreciate just even being able to be um, at this meeting, um, just 
I guess I'm going to kind of respond to Sam and Matt's responses when I asked about contingency plans for Baker vis-a-vis -vis Hancock Village. Um, and yes, I, I will continue to harp on this uh, because it's a reality. Um, I guess I'm wondering whether if, if Mr. Lewis is asking about modulars, um, while there may not be a clear and present and pressing need for them now, um, whether that is something that would go on this list as a sort of contingency potential. I, I mean, that doesn't seem any um, nope, we could less put it, likely. We could put it on the list. It doesn't seem like any less likely a need than, you know, the, the fancy footwork that might have to happen if a Pierce project goes through um, because the Hancock Village stuff is, is a reality. Um, and just as in, if folks are heading out to schools, if you're in the Baker neighborhood, um, it, it, it might be um, educational for folks to just have a look and see you can you can meet with um, CHR or you can just go and, and see or go online. Um, they have, you know, a big new 175 unit building that's already leasing and a gigantic hole in the ground for a 240 unit building that's starting to be built. So um, that's just, you can see it. Carolyn, there. just so you're aware, we did do a tour of both Baker and Lincoln um, the, from the, um, our capital subcommittee and went around with the principals, of both buildings, looking at the items. And that's why many of the items that are on here now for Baker and Lincoln are items that we've already seen and know about. Thanks. I guess I'm I'm sort of saying that if if people don't have a, a clear sense of the scale of the Hancock Village um, construction and new housing and the growth in that neighborhood, um, you can see it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, uh, the timeline, um, Sam or Cliff or Carol, for the CIP, when do we need to have our list into, um, I hope it's Melissa. Mid-September has been the past timeline, unless that's changing. Last year it was September 17th. Okay. So working. I, I, I think Melissa is the person to answer that question. And um, I do think also you hit on an important question, which is, or cross your fingers that it's Melissa. Um, exactly. But yeah, so, okay, okay. Because, well, look. because if there's not someone in her stead, if she, if, you know, she's fortunate enough to get the position she's interviewing for, and there's not someone in her stead, it's going to be, um, a challenging fall for all of us. Right. But that being said, that means that we need to get our act together in the next yeah. month or so, so that we can get it to the school committee. I, it does the full school committee. I, so we've never. Last year, I thought we did vote to, we voted as a subcommittee to take it to the full school committee and it got presented to full school committee for endorsement. That's what I recall. Yeah, I think I, that's what I think we should do. Yeah, I was going to say, if we haven't done that, it seems like it makes sense to do that. So what I would like to do is um, I'll have Robin help me to schedule a, a meeting that um, to sort of look at the list, figure out where we need to go to, what pictures Matt might have already that could help us with, you know, maybe saving some steps and some gas. Um, and I don't think we tell and have time as a committee to go visit all these things. My personal preference, especially given people's vacations and everything else, my personal preference is that also because it's not just our eyes that need to see this, but other people, that there's essentially a little blurb with pictures on each one of these requests that documents it and that lets us see it and lets anyone, whether it's advisory or the public or the select board or staff, town right. staff evaluating, see it. Well, but either way, we would need to sort of look at that at, at a capital subcommittee towards the beginning of um, August or when, whenever. No, we definitely. I'm just saying that, like, I would hope that we can have a meeting where we see these things as opposed to going to visit. Right. 
And the submission deadline is September I mean, some 16th. of us may go to visit anyway, so because sometimes, you know, the picture doesn't really capture it, but that's okay. Especially well, the picture doesn't it's capture right. it, we should take another picture because if it doesn't capture it, then it's not going to sell it when we need it to be sold up the chain, so. Okay. Um, do, do, does Cliff or Carol, do you have an idea of what will, how much money will be in the CIP for next year? Is there any ballpark number? I do not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not being useful, but I do not have that. But when does that number come out? So well, it's based on the free cash. It starts based on the free cash from the previous year, and I'm not sure when that gets certified. Not Usually so, in so, October. So, yeah. Well, so this year's free cash number should be should be known. Pretty That's soon. What well, I it think. should be known because it's from a prior year. Okay. So and there's if I recollect it was eleven million. And not all that is going to go to the CFP has a couple of different um, yeah. but not all that eleven million is going to go to the CIP. Right. I think that would be helpful, Sam, to know if you can talk with Melissa about that. So we have a sense at least of how much there there is even there, like Andy was saying. I can. I, I will. I will reach out because she must have some sense. If it, right, it's based on last year's. Um... Well, I mean, I think a lot of it too is there. Well, yes and no because there's a there's a, a formula, and I think probably Cliff knows it better than me uh, or Carol from the town school partnership, which based on what free cash is certified in the fall is going to drive that number, which we don't know yet. So the so there's me, so, so let me I'm sorry to interrupt. So free cash that gets certified this fall is not available for this year. Okay? Right. Uh, that's for a future year. Um, so the the free cash that will be available this year was certified last fall in 2021. All right. And so Melissa should have that. I've just sent her an email and asked her. If if she has a sense as to what the CIP allocation is going to be. Um, so um, I'm looking at the CIP from last December, the multi-year CIP, and it says for 2024, they were predicting total CIP, if I'm reading this correctly, is 45 million. The 6% policy brought us to 18 and a quarter borrowings of 15, pay as you go of 2.9, an additional, oh, but that was including debt exclusions. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that was a big- So that might be a problem. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I so think we need to- Yeah, so Sam- But Helen, I mean, the, the dollar amount- I, I hear you, Mariah, but I also wanna know what, what they do have. Yes, we, we need to put in what we want and what we need, not what we want, what we need. I, 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 I want to correct myself, okay? So um, I was thinking about this fiscal year, we're talking about next fiscal year. So correct, that, Cliff. Yeah, I, have, I apologize, Sam. So if Sam is correct, we're not going to know what is certified until November-ish. And now correct. Melissa may have a sense as to what that will be, um, but you know, uh, she doesn't have that now because we're still waiting to see what final numbers are for um, revenues from last year. And while we're talking about this, what is happening with the second round of ARPA monies? I have no idea. Nobody- I don't know either. either. Mike, Michael, no? do you know? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, Good. <laughs> Or at least I sort of do. Uh, Thank so you then, for being here then. <laughs> uh, so, well, I'm actually here for another purpose, but I'm happy to do this, uh, to say something, whatever I can here. Um, the second round, there is a list of, uh, of items uh, related to both town schools that is sort of um, set to come out of the second ARPA uh, allocation. Uh, and the um, it's a... Uh, it, it, it's a uh, uh, I, have to, I have to go back and take a look. Let me go back actually, before, rather than stumble around. Let me go back and see if I can actually find the uh, the list so I can tell you what's on it. 
but um, we'll be uh, the upper review committee will be meeting in a few months in order to uh, take a look at that and look at what we want to do with the rest of the funds and also uh, to see whether any funds are coming back because uh, some of the organizations we've granted them to haven't uh, haven't used them. So uh, give me two minutes. I will see what I can find. And if I can find something, I will come back in. OK. Helen, I have one more thing I want to bring up that's missing yeah. on here, which is within the six-year window. At, the, at least I believe it's missing. And that's the Pierce debt exclusion, which we've been talking about. Um, and it's not listed here, but I do think it's um, easy, easy to add. Yeah. And I think it's worth putting in. And I also don't know if everyone who was here was at the advisory committee meeting last night. And um, I think it's worth giving a quick synopsis of the meeting. Um, so I'm going to try to do so and see what see what I miss. Um, Cliff and Carol gave a joint presentation about the Pierce project based on the um, advisory schools and capital subcommittee um, meetings presentation that they got from the project team two weeks ago or so. Two weeks ago to the day, I think, actually, it's from today. Um, and it was um, a really nice presentation, I thought really helpful and, and um, got a lot of good information to advisory. Um, and at the end of it, I think though there was still a lot of questions um, about some of the details of the project. And I will admit that I share some of those questions. And I think at the end advisory voted and uh, anyone who is there, correct me, to recommend that the select board not put it on the November ballot. Am I remembering the, the, the structure? Okay, I see nodding heads. So, and if just to provide that backdrop to everyone, um, to get it on the November ballot was gonna require a select board vote next Tuesday, basically, because the state was requiring that this was gonna have to appear on a statewide ballot and for the state to make a custom ballot, they needed to know by August 6th and the last select board was vote before the last select board meeting before then was going to be next Tuesday. Um, so I, I, I think it's worth recapping that and saying that um, personally, I feel okay um, about it not appearing on the November ballot because I think that it's worth, in my opinion, um, having all of the questions answered, including my own questions, which are still a little bit pending. I'm, I'm frankly worried about the overall cost of it balanced against um, other school needs, including operating override. And I worry about putting all of our eggs in one basket. Um, and that's as a Pierce parent whose kids, I think I've, my kids were in Pierce 12 years. Um, and it's a, it's a really tough building. We know it has flaws, but I'm just worried about the cost and balancing that against other needs. So. I think long story short, it's worth putting it into this tracker. And then I also wanted to provide that context and, and it might be worth Helen, if you're open to that, having a little bit of a discussion about that because it does fit within our six year window. Um, discussion about, I mean, tonight there's the school building committee meeting and we will be talking about the advisory suggestions and what we can do and what we think should happen. I actually, I'm in agreement with the advisory in terms of postponing it. I think it was trying to do it too quickly. We need to answer the questions that people had because we have the answers. Um, and we have done the work to, but it just, it hasn't come out enough for people to really hear it and understand it, uh, both visually and, uh, and on paper. Um, so that we are meeting at seven o'clock. It was a pre-scheduled school building committee meeting. Um, and the thought is that we will uh, postpone the, the request to the, the uh, select board until September. Um, probably, actually, the, the, uh, we're looking at the timeline. I'd, I'd rather not go through the full timeline now, though I can, um, because we're going to be discussing it and it could change uh, at the meeting and I don't want to decide for everybody else on the school building committee uh, about the timeline. But um, we were looking into moving everything forward and giving us time to really discuss and have really good presentations to all boards, uh, including um, 
the select board, the school committee, and the advisory committee, and any other boards that we might need to go to. Um, Mike, I see hoping. Mike and Cliff have their hand, yeah. and Andy. Carolyn, your hand is old, right? <laughs> I'm assuming so. Go ahead, Mike. An old hand. Okay, I, I I just want to inter I hesitate to interrupt this particular discussion, which I'm very interested in. Uh, but um, the non-competitive ARPA budget is basically two million two million dollars and some change, um, and it relates almost entirely to staffing for uh, grant compliance and administration, plus um, uh, some uh, remote uh, uh, some remote access work that needs to be done uh, in um, in town facilities. The remaining portion will be looked at. Uh, the remaining more or less $20 million, a little bit less, will be looked at uh, towards the end of the um, the end of this year. Uh, and so that's the next bite uh, for that. And is that going to be coordinated at all with the CIP? Uh, it, hmm, with the CIP. Um, it certainly has a, you know, what, what we use for capital certainly flows into has an, uh, an effect on the CIP sure the what I'm looking at here the two million dollars does not it's not there's none of none of this capital and that goes to the Brookline Community Fund the two million no no the two million dollars is going to be spent on um, uh, well starting from the biggest the biggest items are grant compliance and administration uh, which amount to about seven eight hundred thousand dollars something on that order uh, and then there's some uh, remote access work. There's a contingency fund of $500,000 that we uh, want to set aside for 2024, FY 2024. Um, there's a bit of work on uh, public buildings, um, uh, salaries, uh, that actually, uh, the, the concierge, the person who sits at the front desk in town hall now in the lobby uh, needs to be, um, we need to be paying for that. Uh, it wasn't in the budget, and so um, there's a some, there's a salary line in there, in there as well. Uh, but there's nothing in here of a capital nature. Uh -huh. It may very well be in the next round, but that you're not going to know about that until November at the earliest. Cliff, you took your hand down. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I I was just going to pick up on something that um, Matt mentioned really at the beginning of the conversation and just so people didn't forget it. Um, yeah, it's something that I mentioned to uh, Mariah before, um, but it's the idea of getting an update uh, to the enrollment forecast, um, the Cropper McGibbon forecast. At least I, you know, I thought I was very impressed with them when they did their work last time around. And, um, you know, I, I guess there is a question as to whether still being in the midst of pandemic related changes um, that a forecast can be as reliable. And right. I think that's a question to be asking the demographers that um, might be contacted. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of issues that could affect population, um, including overseas uh, 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 folks that really could skew numbers one way or another. Um, but there's also the, the fact that when the forecasters do these types of reports, um, <clears throat> they do look at building permits. They look at properties that have been permitted. They do not include properties that are not permitted. And there certainly has been a change um, in the number of properties that have obtained permits um, since uh, the Cropper folks did their work. Now, you know, maybe they could do a quick update based on some of that information. Maybe it's a whole new study. I, I don't really know, but I, I do think, feel like we're all kind of shooting in the dark a little bit, um, relying on that uh, information. So I certainly would encourage folks to take that step. Uh, I don't know if anything can be done with the time frame that we're looking at, but, um, I'd put it on your, on your to-do list. Well, remember that MSBA did do, you know, they looked at 
uh, the the demographics. Yeah. The question is, do you use what they did back then, or is there a new normal? And that I don't know if any profit seer can know that. Well, and, that and that's really the question to ask them. And the MSBA numbers were not too different from the Cropper numbers, if I recall right. correctly. Right. Um, but you know, I also you know just to Carolyn's point a little earlier, uh, you know. The history does show that there is not a correlation between the number of housing units in Brookline and enrollment because things do go in patterns as we saw last night. Um, but it probably would be uh, helpful to just understand mm -hmm. um, the potential impact that might be assumed um, from any additional units at Hancock Village that weren't included before. We might be able to come up with the back of the envelope ourselves if we can find the information in their report. Um, but it's a question that without having yeah. any information, people are going to make up stuff. And I think that that's a risk. Yeah. Uh, Andy, do you wanted to say something? and uh then Nancy. Yeah, if I could bring this back to Pierce, um, like Helen, I, I agree with you in thinking that uh, having this on the ballot in November is not the best idea right now. Um, I do wonder if, uh, about what you were saying before. So it, it, you made it sound like the purpose of voting later would be to give us more time to, we're still full steam ahead with the current project, but need more time to work on the presentation. Am I reading you right? Is that this Correct. is what, this Correct. is in your mind the purpose of a well, delay? Yes, to really help people to understand the work that's been done, because I don't think that that's really gotten, we, that's on us. We didn't do a good enough job of getting out a lot of the information that has been done, the work that's been done to look at the building, to look at the ADA stuff, how much is the cost of, of renovation uh, or just you know code compliance would be. Um, and I think we need to really make, make uh, people need to understand the needs, the, the, you know, the process that we've gone through um, and, and you know, what the design is uh, and where, uh, you know, what the cost is and where we've gotten it down to because there were all sorts of figures thrown out last night <laughs> uh, that some were that were totally off base and some that were closer. So that, does that make sense? Makes sense. I was, I was asking sort of what, what you thought the purpose of a delay would be, because that's not in my mind what the purpose of a delay would be. I do think that we would need to use that time to do a more fundamental rethink of our whole approach to well, peers. I think that's a conversation actually at the school building committee tonight. Hmm. And I think the thing that people need to keep in mind is there's no more money in the feasibility to do a, a full rethink mm -hmm. and to spend more money before we people have really had a chance to know what it is that you know, this project has in it is important. So I mean, we can discuss this at the meeting tonight. I think that, you know, certainly is, is you know, something that that's why it's at the meeting tonight. All right. Nancy? So I have a couple questions. Um, Cliff, what were you referring to when you said, um, trying to estimate enrollment by permits and then estimate enrollments by permits that aren't that don't exist so uh, are we talking about like perhaps at Han perhaps at Hancock Village a one bedroom might have a family with two kids that, that weren't supposed to be something like that or are you saying about people illegally building and then mm -hmm. we're not counting those people no no so so um and I apologize you always think that people know what you what you're talking about um, <laughs> so when forecasters do these population estimates you know they do a lot of work and they look at existing con conditions um, and they also try obviously to come up with a, a a framework for estimating future conditions that might you know generate additional enrollment um, and the folks at cropper they looked at a lot of different things and of course, one of the things they looked at was, well, what is the development situation in town? And in their report near the end, they actually have a, a, a list of all the projects that um, were sort of on the table. Uh, and they highlighted that list, those that they included in their analysis because they were permitted 
and they had the rest that were not included because they weren't permitted, they might be delayed, you know, something might never happen. Um, and within each project uh, that was included, uh, and they have this, you know, for what proposed developments are, they have a list of what the expected um, uh, composition of the bedrooms would be, whether studios, one, two, three, whatever. And they also um, probably take into account um, the percentage of units that are affordable. And what they then do is they look uh, generally at history, um, you know, and, and come up with a, an estimate as to how many children would be expected to come from a unit right um and it's you know less than one in lots of lots of situations or in and over one in some others and they include that into their overall forecast of what population in a particular uh catchment area would be um and uh the cropper folks actually did a forecast for each elementary zone in addition to the the town as a whole which is somewhat unique um, so it's fairly uh, granular. Um, so that's what I was referring to. I hope that's helpful. Is that, inform is that information available anywhere? I, no, we I, have I, that. Yeah, we do. I, yes, we do have. I'd it. love to see that. I would love to see that. I think um, it may be in our our website even. Okay. I, I I can I can send it around to everybody uh, at the end of this meeting. I'll just you know, send it to everyone who's on Robin's distribution list, so. And then the second part of my question is, if we delay the P the Pierce project, what happens to the MSBA money? I mean- No, we're still a, in the time period. And oh, we, are we? Okay, I, I thought for- To explain to them what we're doing. Okay. And work with them on that. Because I thought that there was a, a window that was closing, uh, which is why we were trying to get- Well, we were aiming for an October 31st meeting of theirs. I think at this point, we'll probably move that and that's up to the committee. That's why I'm not talking about the dates right now. We would probably move it till uh, their December meeting. They meet every other month. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Michael and Mariah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think uh, with all due respect, Helen, I think the building committee has a lot more work to do than simply sharpening its presentation. Uh, I would um, just, uh, I think Andy had really the right question there, which is, uh, are you going to rethink the approach? Um, well, the only it, way- Just let me finish, yeah. please. Sure. Thank you. Uh, that's really what the advisory committee was asking for. Uh, and uh, they- they're... Sorry. That's all right. Uh, happens to us all. They-, they uh, they made a pretty good uh, uh, case, and um, I think we'll probably. We, um, my preference, it's on our agenda. Uh, my preference would be to receive the uh, presentation, the report that the advisory committee is going to make to the select board, so that we on the select board, all mem all the members, have a good chance to think about it. But um, uh, don't don't just stop with trying to um, uh, sharpen uh, uh, sharpen a few slides. Uh, there's more work to be done here. Thank you. Mariah? Uh, I, I think I want to basically agree with that. And I know that there's been a lot of work done. And I just, I personally feel uncomfortable with the dollar amount. And so um, how we how we make room for all of our um, accompanying needs isn't just justifying the dollar amount that's out there. It's seeing where the dollar amount can be reduced. So what, what, you know, it's, that's a good question. What is the dollar amount that people would feel comfortable with? I think it's a great question, but for example, what is that? And maybe Carol or Cliff or someone else from advisory knows if we were to apply that, the debt service for the $250 million or whatever it is, $232 million project or 227, I'm not sure right now. No, on the 183 that we would be borrowing, because remember we get money from MSBA. Okay, so if we were to apply the $183 million at whatever we expect the bond rates would be, what does that you know, equate in terms of a percentage increase? And then pairing that with, and I think at the advisory, this was a big discussion. I'm pretty sure this is advisory last night. Um, 
the discussion of partnering the um, of the select board saying that everyone would make it clear what the what the dollar or the percentage or dollar amount of the um, capital requests would be um, in concert with what was a sort of maybe an estimate on the operating override. And so, you know, whatever that percent is for this project, I expect it's going to be relatively big. And what the other one is, I think we just need to have that sense. But if 183 million is, you know, a whatever it is, a 10% to 12%, I don't know what it's gonna be at in the current bond market, then we need to really think twice about that in my opinion. That's just my opinion, but that's how I feel about it. Maybe it's not my opinion based on Carol's <laughs> smile right now. Uh, Carol? I, I, I was just gonna say, I don't have, I don't have those numbers um, and uh, I could probably do a back of the envelope um, if I just took a, a you know in, an interest rate and 25 years and 185 million dollars and and get back to everybody uh, based upon last year's um, uh, uh, tax roll, um, but that doesn't necessarily help with regard to what an operating override request might be. Um, I think that's sort of but I think we, I was saying partnering it with an estimate of what the operating override request would be, right? Yeah, if we, if we actually have any decent information on that. But I'm, I'll, I'll try to do that calculation and you know, come up with my own back of the envelope. Melissa's out of town, you know, not in the office right now, and I'll run it by her and you know, we can we'll have some, some sense. Carol? Um. I think, you know, I'm agreeing with what Mike said and, um, and, and, and Cliff, you know, I think some of the challenges and the questions can't be answered by the school committee or the peer school building committee, um, because it's really a question for the select board and the town administrator as to what is, the question was challenged is how are you reasonably going to start allocating capital among all these competing projects? And that's why this project's being challenged because we see there's such a demand for capital coming forward and the debt levels are so high. So I do think it's important that um, the school building committee and this committee think about what would be the bottom number you would need to make it better, not not optimum, not what we're looking for, but what would be an improvement to the situation that would make a difference? I think having options that will be bracketing the request, just like we had at the beginning of this Pierce Building Committee uh, uh, project where we had you know, just code only versus up to whatever, I think now um, it's gonna be important to show uh, what could you do? Like Charlie had said that years ago, there was an attempt to put just an elevator in. What minimal things can you do that will make a difference in the functionality of that school? Those are the kinds of questions I see that whenever this does go to the select board for a vote, and if it is months from now, the AC is still going to be asking, and and hopefully the select board will be asking too. So I think it's getting back to Andy's point earlier. David, I just want to say I think there is merit both to what Helen has said as well as to what as Andy said. I think certainly a lot of us are concerned by these rising cost projections, but to Helen's point, we do need to make sure that the community has a better understanding of what the drivers have been to increase these costs. And in particular, that uh, some of these proposals about minimalistic changes to bring Pierce up to ADA compliance, it's fairly complex and very expensive. <laughs> and there was a slide in yesterday's presentation, I believe, that showed that to just to bring Pierce up to code, it would be upwards of around 150 million. So when you look at 150 million versus 180 million. 137, you know, I want to be honest, it's 137 for just code and okay, bringing systems million. up. The question is, is that for 
an extra 50 million to have a school that we would really be happy with that could hopefully last us the next hundred years, is that really a big ask? And I do understand the select board's job here is a bit different and has to look at all of the uh, potential spending that's going to be taking place in town. So I would hope that with this uh, delay, if that's indeed what ends up happening, that we do both of make sure that the community is brought up to date on what the numbers actually are and why they're currently there, what the cost drivers are, what the opportunity costs are, why certain decisions were made when they were made, uh, as well as looking at potential uh, design changes. Uh, so just for example, there are a few that might be easier to accomplish, but there would be associated debates with. So for uh, about 16.4 million of the cost is to connect the historic Pierce building to what would be the new structure. Perhaps it would be possible to drop that cost down. About 13 million is impact from the garage. Perhaps there could be a change there. Uh, and approximately 7.3 million relates to uh, geothermal. And there was some discussion at the advisory committee meeting last night regarding whether it could still be a fossil fuel free building without geothermal. And it sounded like there could be. So I do think there can be progress made on those fronts to potentially reduce this number to something that would be more palatable. But I, I agree with you and I've been asking the architects to look at those things. Um, I mean, you know, there was even a discussion possibly of, well, yeah, uh, the, all those things are, are important. Mariah? I, I just wanted, that, yeah, thanks David. I just wanted to say that I think it is important that we don't just say, oh, well, it's up to the select. I don't think you actually intended this, but I wanna be explicit, David, that um, it's not just up to the select board, it's up to us also to put together we have to, I mean, this meeting is about our capital investment plan, right? And so how are we thinking about our own needs? And, you know, if in if the next project after this one is Baker, which we've all talked about, that's not a surprise, you know, how are we leaving room? Even if, even if the town doesn't only fund school projects, how are we leaving enough room for that next school project for Baker School, you know, for Baldwin, for these other large asks to happen? And so I, I am conscientious and concerned about putting all of my eggs in the Pierce basket and not having enough room left for these other critical projects as well. And that's- I, The problem, I would agree with you on a building that, that it might make sense to try and, and, and figure out, but we have looked at that. That's the thing that people aren't understanding. By doing the ADA stuff, we make the building even smaller. But all I'm saying, place. Helen, is if that if this is what we're doing, then are we I mean, committing I would rather ourselves just not do it if that's the case? But are that's we committing it. ourselves and saying, okay, well, we're not going to do another building project for making this up? Insert number here: twenty years until some other stuff falls off the the um, I don't know. I forget what you call the, the ledger, debt. but basically the debt, the debt right? Exactly yeah. until some of our debt concludes. Like, what are we? You know, if we if are we making that um, assurance? to everyone that we're not gonna ask for more money until other projects fall off. Like, the, because I don't see us, I, I haven't heard us having that discussion. That's why, and that Matt is why I'd like to see some of that, that future visioning so that we have those numbers or at least that those time in placeholders going out for when we expect these other big projects to hit. Under, understood, I can, gi I can give you a potential, yeah. um, you know, debt, but anyway, pay, I mean, debt to me, schedule as well. To me, that's really important is thinking about like leaving room for everything else that we care I, about. I 100% agree with you, but I think that putting good money after a bad building doesn't make sense. That's that's my opinion. It's a terrible and, conundrum. I agree. Uh, yeah. Well, for me, it's pretty, I, for me, I, I can't see just doing ADA because you can't. I, I, I know what the building looks like. Um, and the, the, the open building. floor plan design makes that extremely difficult for that particular building. It's, it's easier in, in a more traditional building with where the rooms have four walls. I guess the only concern I have, so I'd interrupt is, and I texted it last night, is there's a threshold, 30% of the building's value, which isn't gonna be much currently. Let's say the value as it's assessed is, I don't know, I'll throw a number out, 50 million. 
15 million, if you spend more than 15 million, it triggers under the law, you have to make the whole building code compliant. And that's the problem. I'm just going to push back a little bit, Sam. There could be incremental changes that come under 15 million that don't make the building fully ADA compliant, but will improve its functionality. And I would encourage the schools to think about what those options might be. Oh. Carol, have you so visited the I building? Have, I, I have you visited that. the building? You haven't. You're on mute, Carol. You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> I keep on forgetting. No, I haven't. I but I was struck by the compelling video, and I can appreciate the complexities by seeing the plans, just because of my, you know, my background. Right. You understand. So, um, this, but 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 there is this concept of not going all the way. Yeah. No, there and, is an incremental and, and approach but... things on the on the margin, and the question is, how much can you approve something on the margin? And what will that cost you? Okay. That's, that's so the kind of questions you're, you, as an outsider, those are the kinds of questions I see that you folks need to be grappling with. So. Okay. Michael, uh, if I could uh, raise the, um, um, uh, just go back to something that, uh, that two things actually that David uh, said, um, a $50 million increment is not a small amount. Um, and if in fact the, it's only fifty million dollars uh, to um, to achieve what uh, what you ideally like to achieve, uh, and it is a very interesting question as to whether a series of incremental updates over a period of time could be perhaps funded through an override, could be could and, and could focus on the things that would really be significant in improving the the building. But David, the other thing is. Um, you do need to, even if you, or say, well, you do need to look at the town as a whole because the money comes out of the taxpayers' pockets uh, as a whole, and they look at their tax bill, um, not in the school piece and the town piece, but rather as a whole. And the risk that we run is that we'll, by uh, putting too heavy a burden on, we will jeopardize an operating override that will be a very serious problem for both school operations and town operations. And that is really the, that's my, the heart of my concern. Andy? Yeah, when I think about what work the schools need to do, I think a piece of that needs to be, we should really figure out, like given the extra or the additional capacity we now have at Driscoll and Ridley, um, whether we can over time try to shrink Pierce down to three, three and a half sections and keep it there. Because if we were able to do that, that would make some things easier, regardless of whether we stay in the current building or come up with a, a plan for, for a new one. But I think that's something that we have the ability to do on the school side. And I, to me, that's an essential piece. Okay. That's, these are all good things to hear. Definitely. Um, it's actually 5.56. And um, we will uh, schedule another capital subcommittee to go over the capital issues. I don't know, Mariah, do you have any? Can we make it another capital joint finance to conclude the CIP since it got reviewed by both last time? Sure. Like we ended up having to review it at both meetings last time anyway, so we might as well just be done we with did. it at one meeting. I didn't meeting. remember that, but okay. We did, yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, then you and I will find some dates and then, then ask yeah. everybody else Sounds to come. Good. Okay. And I just want to, I just want to, before we conclude, say thank you to Matt in particular for all the hard work and Charlie that you did on pulling this all together because it's really exciting to me to see this um, coming to fruition and thinking that we're going to have this. So thank you. I agree. I agree. And I just want to go back one second while I still have you all here. I challenge all of you to go to the building and see it. Please, I'm happy to take anybody, the principal is happy to take anybody on a walk through the building because I think it's easy to talk in a vacuum when you haven't seen something and say, oh, well, we can do a little of this and we can do a little of that and we'll move some kids out and everything will be fine. This is a building that children have to live in 
and, and be taught in. And I really think if you're making this huge a decision, this is a building we said years ago, as, as Susan Granoff said at the, um, at the advisory, that we had promised we were gonna redo because it was a building that was built badly. You know, we have to admit mistakes when we make mistakes. And I think that, are you talking to me, Michael? No, actually, I'm talking to somebody in the room here, my, oh. my wife. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. She's asking me, how long is this going to go on? Okay, it's, gonna, it's, <laughs> over now. it's going to be over in two minutes or less. Um, but it was built badly to begin with. And to put good money into a bad building, I think, is a huge mistake. It's not fiscally responsible. If we don't do it, that's one thing. But to put money into it makes no sense. So I, I challenge everybody here, and I, I can start scheduling times for people to come and visit the building. I would prefer for you to visit it in the fall when the kids are there, so you can actually see it running and see how it works or doesn't work. Um, so I'll I also wanna add one thing, which is that there was this parallel brought up between Pierce and some of the other buildings like Lawrence and other buildings yesterday. And I liken Pierce to a concrete balloon and that it's basically hollow on the inside and got this big concrete shell. It's not like some of these other buildings which are built more classically and have the much more flexibility. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, that's another important thing. When we, we can't just say, oh, it's the youngest of all these buildings and look how Lawrence has flexed. It's a fundamentally, as Helen said, it's a fundamentally different building. It and that really doesn't change the fact that the project is really expensive and we wanna figure out how to pair it back. So thanks everybody. Thank you.